There's a saying in our industry, video would be easy if it wasn't for audio. Truth is, capturing great sound doesn't have to be complicated, but it does require the right equipment and a few essential best practices. In this video, I'll guide you through my straightforward setup and techniques for recording high quality audio. Whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your process, these tips will help you capture clear professional sound. So let's jump right in. Working mostly in corporate films, I capture a lot of interviews, so audio is crucial to delivering high-quality videos to my clients. There is nothing worse than an interview with bad audio. Of course, in order to record high-quality audio, it starts with using high-quality equipment. But it doesn't mean you have to break the bank. There is definitely a balance between price and quality, and you'll need to figure out what fits your budget and your quality expectations. To eliminate any potential issues with wireless transmission, I try to use a wired boom mic as much as possible. They sound great, you don't see the microphone in the shot, and it makes it easier to film multiple interviews without having to run a lapel on each individual. The mic can be set up and the person can just come in, sit down, and we can start recording right away. I typically use the normal windscreen when filming indoors and use the heavy windscreen when filming outside. The boom pole I use is a wired boom pole, so an XLR cable runs through it, making it cleaner on set with one less cable I need to set up. It also allows me to be able to move around when capturing sound for B-roll without having to worry about an extra free cable hanging around the pole. I also prefer to use a mic holder that allows the microphone to float freely inside of the holder, limiting any vibration from reaching the microphone. I use an external recorder, in my case, the Zoom F6. Not only is it a 32-bit float recorder, which has the largest dynamic range, making it possible to capture audio without clipping, but it also has timecode capabilities, either to generate or receive timecode from another source, like my Sony FX6 camera, for example. Using timecode also allows me to set the recorder to auto-trigger when I push the record button on the camera. Using timecode allows me to sync my audio and video quickly and accurately. But the reality is, today's editing software can automatically sync your video and audio files in a very accurate way by simply listening to the audio, making the timecode functionality less relevant. In my experience, I found it beneficial to run an output of the recorder to the audio input of my camera. The FX6 has two XLR inputs, so it's easy to just send the recorder's output to the camera as either a reference track or, in a lot of cases, the actual track I'll be using in the final video. Just keep in mind that the output of the recorder is a line out, not a mic out, so you'll need to make sure that you select line level on your camera or the audio on your camera will be over-modulating. So why record the audio separately on a recorder if my camera has audio input? Well, the recorder allows me to record at 32-bit float. It's also a lot easier to monitor the level and gives me, in this case, six channel if working with multiple microphone or audio sources. Some recorders, including the Zoom F6, have a quarter 20 thread on the top and the bottom to mount the recorder between the tripod plate and the camera. But the reality is the camera will not be very secure. It'll actually be wiggling around when seated on top of the recorder. So I'm using a cheese plate with a quick release system, making it easy to mount and remove the entire unit without taking the camera off the tripod. You can also use the exact same setup with the boom mic mounted on the camera for B-roll or more run and gun situation. Just be aware that often the on-camera boom mic holder is too large to actually hold the microphone securely. So you might need to purchase a separate rubber spacer. When mounting the mic on my camera, I can either use the recorder or run the microphone directly into the XLR port of the FX6. If you run the microphone directly into the camera, make sure you select mic level and not line level. You also need to select the plus 48 volt in order to send phantom power to the microphone. So now that we understand the equipment, let me walk you through best practices to help record high quality audio. The first thing is the position of the microphone. Using a unidirectional microphone means the microphone will capture sound coming from the front of the mic, so the microphone needs to be pointed directly towards the person. When setting up for an interview, I will lower the stand holding the boom pole until the mic comes into frame, and then I can just raise it up slightly until the microphone is barely off frame. 
You also want the mic to be well centered over the person. A few inches higher or off centered will have a significant impact on the quality of the recording. The next best practice is to adjust the level of the recorder and the camera to be identical. Using the tone generator on the recorder, I can now adjust the input level on the camera to match the level of the recorder. I also tell the camera to use input one on track two, and I adjust the level slightly lower on track two than on track one, giving me even more headroom in case the person start laughing loudly, for example. Once those are set, I will no longer adjust the level on my camera, but simply on the recorder. Speaking of levels, industry standards says that audio should be recorded between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. Too often I see videos with levels right at the zero mark. When running levels close to zero, you risk the platform clipping or compressing your audio, resulting in undesired outcomes. I normally run my audio on the lower end, so around minus 12 dB, so I can just adjust it up in post-production. Now, the last thing to record high quality audio is to actually monitor your audio. Seeing the level move up and down on the recorder or the camera is just not enough. All it tells you is that something is being recorded, but you need to use headphones and actually listen to your audio in order to identify any issue like bad cables or bad microphone positioning, as well as poor levels. Because the Zoom recorder is my main recording device, I want to monitor the audio from the Zoom recorder, so I'll plug my headphones into the Zoom recorder. Monitoring out of the recorder also makes it easy to adjust the headphone levels. Be careful when monitoring the audio, because if the level sounds too loud in your headphones, make sure you look at the levels on the recorder, and if they're accurate, like between minus 12 and minus 6 dB, you need to adjust the headphone volume, not the input level. If I plan on using the audio track from the camera, then I'll plug and monitor the audio out of the camera. I hope this was helpful in understanding how to best record high quality audio. Let me know what setup you're using and how different your workflow is. Thank you for watching this video until the end. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you my free camera setting cheat sheet. Just follow the link below to download the free cheat sheet. Thanks again and happy filming.